What's up, what's up? It's your homeboy, Maul the Pimp, a.k.a. MTP, and welcome to another edition of Stories from the Pimp. This is going to be a real interesting story. Y'all might laugh about this. Me and my partner sit back and laugh at it now, but it wasn't funny at the time. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh, this is what happened. My dog, my homie, Big V from the Multi-Platinum Group, Napa Roots, they come in town for a show in Chattanooga one time, and my people steal his phone at the hotel room. You follow what I'm saying? So, let me give y'all the rundown of how that happened. So, uh, shout out to my brother, my dog, my west side partner, Big Mike, you feel me? Because of him, this story is possible, you dig? So, what happened was, uh, me and Big V from Napa Roots had a video shoot a few years earlier for a song I did for an album that I had. My dog, Big Mike, come to the video shoot, him and Big V meet. So, you know, they become homies and acquaintances on the strength of me, you dig? Fast forward a few years later, uh, Napa Roots had a concert in Chattanooga at a club that was open at that time called Midtown. That was downtown. So he called me naturally. Of course, I'll be in your city next week, man. You know, come out there and fuck with me. So uh, he get in town. And the hotel they were staying at was, uh, I forgot the name, of ho the name of the hotel at the time. But it's the hotel that got uh, City Cafe in the lobby. Right there, right across from the Reed House. You feel me? So they staying down there. You know, that's five, five feet walking from the west side. So he called me, said he had the hotel. I called Big Mike, hey man, meet me at the hotel so we can holler at him, woo, -woo this and that. Big Mike got his little cousins with him. I, I know him, you feel me? I know I know both of them real good, but they his, they, them his little cousins. So he said, I got, I got such and such in the car with me. I'm like, man, uh, drop them off, bro, and then come to the hotel. Don't come with them. He like, man, I ain't finna go way over here and drop them off. They with him, I finna bring them with me. He didn't get what I was trying to say, bro, you feel me? So he brought them with him. So he brought them, they pull up in the hotel parking lot, I'm in the hotel parking lot waiting, Big V come out, dap me and Big Mike up, you know, nice to see y'all, whoop whoop. He speak to the little cousins, you follow what I'm saying? Now, at the time, the little cousins, you know, they, they snorting powder, so they geeked up on some other shits. They, they arguing about whatever they arguing about, they just arguing the whole time. So when it's time to go in the room to chill with Big V, Mike said them, man, y'all arguing, man, y'all stay the fuck outside with that shit. Left them outside in the parking lot. We went up in the hotel room. We chilling, right? So we chopping it up about, you know, you know, you know, just catching up on shit. And then he was like, hey, man, I think we perform at 12 midnight, man. So we're going to probably leave the hotel like maybe 11 o'clock going to the club. He was like, Ma, I'm going to call you around 10 to pull back up on me, bro. I'm going to call you around 10 o'clock to pull back up on me. Cool. So I'm expecting that call at 10 o'clock, right? We leave out his room. Mike, Big Mike is looking for his little cousins because remember he left them outside because they was on that, they on that geeked up shit, so he left them outside. He come out the room, he looking for his little cousins, he can't find them. You feel me? He looked all around the hotel, he like, man, fuck, them. I'm finna leave, they can walk their ass to the west side. He left, you feel me? I go back, I go back to the west side, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and he gonna call him, he's supposed to call me at 10 o'clock to, to come back and meet him at the hotel, 9.30. I call him, no answer. 9.45, I call Big V, no answer. 10 o'clock, the time he's supposed to be calling me, I call him, no answer. You feel me? So I'm, I'm right there waiting like, man, what the fuck going on? I'm thinking he's asleep. About 10.30, he still ain't called. He's supposed to call me at 10 o'clock. So about 10.45, I leave, I pull back up at the hotel. <laughs> when I pull back up at the hotel, he pulling in the, back in the hotel, and it's, I think he had a Cadillac Escalade at the time. He pulling back in the hotel, it's him. Three of his homeboys in the car, they all got black bandanas wrapped around their face and shit. He got his pistol out. So my man, them little niggas who was with you, man, I'ma kill them little motherfuckers, man. They stole my motherfucking phone. I'm looking like, man, what the hell are you talking about, bro? You feel me? So he, he ranting and raving and all this old shit. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? We, he park, I park, we get out. I said, what's going on? He said, them little niggas you had with you, man, you and Big Mike, man, them niggas came in my room and stole my motherfucking phone. That's why I ain't called you. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> what happened, man? So we go in the room, what happened was, if you remember, keep in mind, when we went in the room to holler him early, me and Big Mike, he left them niggas outside because they was on some other shit. So when Big Mike came out, remember, he couldn't find them, so he left them. He went back to the west side. He left them. You follow what I'm saying? So uh, once they realized that he had pulled off and left them, well, they naturally knew it. They come knock on Big V, though. They knock on his door. He let them in because they my people. You get what I'm saying? Even though... They Mike's little cousins, to him, that's my, that I saw them with you, them, that's my old people, you follow me? So they knock on his door, he let them in, they was like, yeah, man, Big Mike left us, man, uh, 
we trying to we stranded, we trying to get a ride. Can we use the phone? He let him use the hotel room phone. While they're using the phone, he turned his back on them because he's getting dressed. You follow what I'm saying? So when he turned his back, he got all his jewelry laid out on the bed. Watches, chain, ring, all this shit, jewelry laid out on the bed. And his phone was on the bed. So he turned his back. He in the mirror getting dressed. I guess one of them on the phone, on the hotel phone, trying to call Big Mike and see where he at and cut and get a ride or whatever they call him for. The other dude snatched himself. At the time, iPhones had just came out. The other dude snatched his iPhone, put it in his pocket. They leave out the room. You follow what I'm saying? Steal the man's phone. The man got $200,000 in jewelry. It's still the man's phone. And let me say this. A rapper will rather you steal his jewelry because most, most rappers, is, that shit is insured. You follow what I'm saying? So they can get that back. You dig what I'm saying? It might look bad that you stole it, but they can get that shit back. It won't be a financial loss. They stole the man's phone. Anybody in the, in, the, in the entertainment industry works off of their phone. That's your context. That's your email. That's how you. That's how motherfuckers get in touch with you to send money. That's how you work right there off your phone. So a phone is definitely more important than jury if you're in, if you're in this entertainment game. You dig? So the fact they stole his phone, that was his livelihood right there. You dig? So they stole the phone, left out the room. That's why he wasn't able to call me and say, hey, man, pull back up at the hotel. So when I pulled back up, again, I saw what I saw, him saying this and that. So when he told me the story, them niggas stole my phone and whooped through. And what he kept on saying was this, which made me feel guilty. Now, keep in mind, I told Big Mike, hey, bro, drop them off. Bring, you come yourself. He know you. Drop them off, don't bring them. He brought them anyway, though, right? So them same dudes he brought. That's who stole the phone. So Big V the whole time, he kept saying, man, Ma, I only know them dudes, bro. I don't know them little dudes. I let them in because they was your people. They was with you. They was with you. That's why I let them in. They was with you, and they stole my phone. So I'm like, what can I say? You follow what I'm saying? So now that you're in my city, and your phone gets stolen on my watch by people who are with me, I'm responsible for that now. You follow what I'm saying? So it's around 11, 11, 30 at night. We got to be at the club at 12. I'm blowing Big Mike up, calling him. He ain't answering. He ain't answering. I'm calling him back and forth. He ain't answering. We end up going to do the show at 12 midnight. So about 2, 3 in the morning, once the club let out, we back in the room. By this time, Big Mike done called me back. Man, I was asleep, man. What's going on, bro? I said, bro, your little cousin done stole this man's motherfucking phone out of his room, bro. They came, when you, left, when you left him at the hotel, they came and knocked on his door, bro. He let him in. He turned his back. They stole his phone, man. Man, you bullshitting me now. I ain't bullshitting, bro. They stole his phone, bro. He came, he came out there with pistols and everything, talking about he going to do this and that, man. So... We need to get the phone back, basically. So he might jump out of bed. You feel me? Uh, <laughs> he uh, made a few phone calls and traced it down. So once he made a few phone calls, he basically put his little street element into play because he connected in that area. You feel what I'm saying? So he made a few phone calls. He called me back. He said, hey, Ma, they done sold the phone for $50 to a bitch in the west side, bro. You feel what I'm saying? $50, bro, to a bitch in the west side. He go to funny part about that. Listen to this real close. So it's a bitch in the west side who they done sold the phones for fifty dollars or whatever. You follow what I'm saying? Mike called the phone. The, the girl ended up uh, answering the phone. So he had to play her like this. So <laughs> listen to this shit. The girl he called right once he found out who she was. This chick is a bitch who got AIDS. You feel me? This bitch got AIDS. You feel me? So and he know this. But he got to get the phone back. You follow what I'm saying? He know this. So he found out who she was. He was like, yeah, man, you sound sexy as hell. Little mama, man, man, let me, let me come see. I want to come pick you up, man, do this and that to you. But he put the little pimp talk on her. She was like, oh, pull up on me right now then. You feel what I'm saying? He pulled up on her in the west side. He put her in the car. He rolled the window down. She come out to the car. They talking or whatever. Whoop, whoop. So he was spitting that little pimp shit to her. She, he, and he was like, man, damn, that's a nice little phone, man. Wait, when, that, when that motherfucker come out, let me see that. She had the phone through the window. He pulled off on her. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> he pulled off on her, bro. <laughs> he pulled off on her with the phone. But he had to finesse a bitch and like he wanted to fuck a bitch who had AIDS in order to do this. You follow what I'm saying? He pulled off on her with the phone. He called me. Hey, Ma, I got the phone. Now, keep in mind, the hotel is right down the street from the west side. He called me. Hey, Ma, you at the hotel? Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Big V right now. He said, I got the phone, bro. I said, V, he got your phone back, bro. You bullshit, Ma. He got the phone. Mike pulled up, jumped out the car, hit Big V with the phone. And he was like, and him and Big Mike was already cool. But that right there just made it go up times 50. He was like, man, good looking out, bro. Man, appreciate that, man. Needed that, man. He offered to pay Big Mike for the phone. Big Mike turned, I mean, man, keep the money, bro, man. That was my fault, man. I don't want your money, man. I just want your phone back, which was real genuine. You follow what I'm saying? Which made Big V look at him like, damn, that's what's up, bro. 
So the average nigga would have took the money. You feel me? He was willing to pay that shit. But he got the phone back and uh big people was like, man, good looking out, man. I needed that, man, man, this and that. And Mike was like, man, I apologize, man. Ma told me not to bring them niggas, man, but I did, man. And so it was my responsibility to get it back. And whoop, whoop. so he got the phone back. And everything was cool at that point. Now we still laugh about that to this day. Uh Big V still brings that shit up to me right now. About a month ago, me, him, and Big Mike was on a three-way call. We talked about shit for about three hours, man, like it happened two days ago. And one time, I was in Nashville uh, a few years ago at this event called the Music City Awards, I think. You feel me? Uh, and it was at Club Limelight in Nashville. Big V was a, a, a guest at that show right there. So he was in the club or whatever. He ended up coming outside the club. He spotted me when I was pulling up. First thing he said, that's my nigga Ma pimp from chat. I was in chat one time. They stole my phone. Then he got my phone back on some real street shit. This 10 years after the fact, bro. You feel me? But it let me know he never forget that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, and that kind of draw us closer. They let him know that I really wasn't on no fuck boy shit and that I was willing to fix my mistakes. And then as far as him and my dog, Big Mike, they met through me. So on the strength of me, he, he accepted Big Mike as a brother. But when that happened and Big Mike went and pulled his street muscle and got that phone back, now he look at Big Mike like, Bam, 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 without Maul ain't being involved. Him and Big Mike chop it up without me being on the phone. You follow what I'm saying? They got their own relationship on the strength of me. They met through me, but that shit right there just made it even more, you know what I'm saying, more solid right there. So that's my story right there about when Big V from Nap Roots got his phone stolen. We got the phone back, so everything was all cool. It's a motherfucking joke now. It's funny. You know what I'm saying? We brothers, we all brothers, but it was, it was, a, it was a cool incident. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh. That's my story right there with stories from the pimp, man. So go to my website, www.mildapimp.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is called Pimp Hollow TV. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Mildapimp. Salute.